pretty new to lifting. My body's 140 pounds. I've deadlifted about three times a week, and I have two questions. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening, guys? Silent Mike, Super Training Gym, Mark Bell's Powercast, How Much Bench.net, Reebok1.com. Checking in another QA. Instagram, that's Silent Mike with two Ks. And on Snap, it's Silent M I K 3. If you guys want to keep up with what the hell's going on, obviously subscribe here if you want to keep up with training and the longer footage. Here we go, let's get started. Uh, what style of weight belt do you like and why? Single prong, double prong, and lever. Um, I've used all three and I don't honestly have that much of a preference. I've Mostly what I like about a belt is that it um, contours to my body and that it's pretty much broken in, which uh, I think we've accomplished pretty well with the slingshot belt, which should be out um, within the month probably. So within the next two to three weeks, stay tuned. Um, but as long as it contours to my waist, I can wear it a little bit looser and then I can really breathe into it and that feels best for me. Um, after you are past the point of linear progression, how do you know what weight you should be doing? Um, Typically, I like to train anywhere between the 70, maybe even 65 to 80 percent range. It kind of depends on your goals and it depends on where you are in your training. Uh, it's a very complex question. We can get into it. Um, but basically, linear progression would mean you do uh, 3 by 5 at 225 this week. Then next week, you might do 3 by 5 at 235, 3 by 5 at 245 the following week, etc. Um, now, when gains and and plateaus come about, you gotta get a little bit tricky with it, uh, but it doesn't have to be that complex. Basically, you could do 225 for a three by five, then you could do 225 for a four by five, then you could do 225 for a five by five. Once you've hit that all clean and smooth, then you go back and reset with just like 230. So then you go 230 for three by five, 230 for four by five, 230 for five by five, reset, something like that. There's a million ways to do it. Uh, you can switch up the rep schemes. You can switch up the set schemes. Um, but that's like daily undulating periodization, but uh, that's the most simplest way to progress. Do a Reddit uh, AMA, you coward. Um, I don't know much about Reddit, but I'm always down. I do a lot of Q and A's on here just cause it's simple. Um, I also do them live sometimes on the YouTube here, but uh, I'd be down to do one on uh, Reddit if I knew how the hell it worked. Why is Mark so much smaller than me? Hmm? I'm about like 225 right now. Mark's probably about 270. He's also two or three inches taller than me. Uh, what are fixes for twisting hips while squatting? The key is to put it all in your groin and your back. Take your legs totally out of the equation. Lift with your lower back in a jerking, twisting motion. Um, could be a lot of factors. Um, one could just be mobility. It could be tighter in one hip than the other, and that could be from sitting at a desk. That could be postural. That could be how you walk. That could be how you sleep. Um, it could also be like a motor pattern deal. So uh, if you watch yourself in the mirror and you start to twist one way, if the bar is uneven on your back, it could also even be shoulder mobility. If one shoulder is mo more mobile than the other and the bar is sitting crooked on your back, you could tend to squat a little bit crooked. Uh, I just say lighten the weights and practice everything you can. Film yourself, adjust, film yourself, adjust. Try to keep those knees um, tracking similar, core track similar, shoulder similar. Uh, what do you think about powerlifting as a long-term sport? What about health implications? Um, I think any sport, uh, when going to the extreme of trying to be the best, uh, there's going to be different health implications. So I've mentioned this all the time, the deeper, you know, we all started this for health and fitness and the deeper you get into it, the less healthy it is and the less fit you become because you become more specific to whatever your goals may be. Uh, and in powerlifting, that's often gaining a lot of weight uh, and handling a lot of, lot of weight over and over and over in the weight room. Um, I do think powerlifting uh, in moderation uh, is very healthy. The squat, the bench, the deadlift uh, with sub-maximal weights can keep you very healthy, very strong, uh, and very powerful for athletes, uh, children, middle-aged, and adults. While cutting some fat for a month or two, shift focus on the big three to lower reps and maintain strength. If strength decreases too much, am I losing muscle? Uh, good idea to cut like this. Yeah, man, it sounds like you have the right idea. Basically, what I like to do when I'm cutting, uh, personally, I'll switch my workouts up just to um, kind of handle my mindset of not losing strength because that can fuck with me personally a little bit. Um, but basically, what you want to do is kind of train similar to you had been training. That's how you built that muscle, right? Whether, in my opinion, I think you should train all rep range, all set ranges uh, for the big three and the strength movements, uh, hitting different fibers. But uh, I would train the similar way during a cut. You're just now on a little bit of caloric deficit. So you maintain that muscle because you're pushing the same amount of volume, same amount of weight as long as you can. Obviously, it won't last forever if you're going to drop 20, 30, 40 pounds. But uh, maintaining that strength uh, will be a good indicator, not a guaranteed indicator, that you're maintaining most of that muscle. Pretty new to lifting. My body's 140 pounds. I've deadlifted about three times a week, and I have two questions. Whoa. 
difference between conventional and sumo delos uh, and which is one's better for beginners? Uh, we'll start there. I think beginners uh, should get down with the conventional. Uh, the conventional is a little easier to understand. Uh, Form-wise, it also builds a little bit better base in my opinion. Um, so if you do conventional for a long time, it'll be easier to switch to sumo. I've been stuck at 265 and haven't been able to get past that for almost two months now. How can I get past this? Well, uh, finding a plan, finding a program and following it will get you past it, that wall. Basically, uh, what happens is you see such early progress that each week you think you can just jump 10 pounds, hit a PR, hit a PR, hit a PR. Uh, but now we got to go back and it's cliche, but you got to start working on that strength rather than uh, building that strength, building that strength, working on that strength rather than testing that strength over and over. Um, the more advanced you get, the less chances you have to test that strength without it becoming detrimental. So, you know, personally, I test my strength only at the meet. Uh, in training, it's always smooth, it's always fast, uh, it's always sub-maximal, it's always under 90% until, you know, two weeks out from the meet kind of deal. <laughs> Mike, I've noticed that almost all record holder uh, power lifters squat with heel arched shoes. Um, no, uh, don't make a lot of claims like that. Um, not to get on you, buddy, but don't make claims like that unless it's absolutely true um, and you're guaranteed it's true because that's just not a fact. But we'll continue with your question. Uh, notice power lift, world record power lifters have squat shoes. Uh, notice that you personally wear them and now that you wear flat soled shoes, you squat uh, with as well. Do you feel they can still help good squat habits for beginning or intermediate lifters? And is there a point where you should stop using them? Uh, the only point I think you should start using them is if you have issues with uh, like ankle mobility uh, and hitting depth. Sometimes how you're built, you can squat a little bit more upright with those things. That's why weightlifters use them. Um, some squatters squat that way so they can use them. But there's tons and tons and tons of really strong squatters, world record holders, um, and the elite of the elite that squat in flats, like the whole Lillibridge family, uh, Tom Callis, um, Matt Winning, the list goes on about who squats in flats. Uh, it's a personal thing, but it does just basically have to do with your mobility. Um, what's the best strategy for cutting down some fat while maintaining strength? Just went over that one. Do you foam roll? I personally don't foam roll. Um, one, I can't get a foam roller to uh, put the type of pressure I need on me, so I'll use a plate or a kettlebell here and there. Um, but it's also just not in my mindset to sit there and dig on myself all day, so I'd rather get a massage or something. So that's kind of the route I go. Why do people comment and ask if Mike's going to explain how to power lift to them uh, in the comments of an Instagram picture? It is true, some some comments and questions get a little complex for you know uh, Instagram in general or even um, you know, a quick hit Q&A like this, uh, but I'll do my best. You know, the best chance just uh, is the voiceovers that I do, the podcasts that I do. So Mark Bell's Powercast on iTunes, subscribe here and pay attention to, to the voiceovers. I'm always trying to teach uh, and you can pick up bits and pieces here and there, but to explain everything is just almost impossible because everyone's so different. How do you recover uh, physically and mentally after a crappy training session? Uh, that's a great question. Um, the closer I get to the meet, actually more recently, the crappier sessions I've had, and that's much harder for me, uh, trying to pull the reins in on my competitiveness. Um, a typical training day, uh, if I'm not competing and I have a crappy session, I just try to thrash myself. That normally makes myself feel pretty good. So early in the session, normally early to middle, you can kind of tell if it's gonna be a good session or not, meaning you could hit the numbers you want, you're strong that day, form is good that day, whatever. Uh, and if it's all off, I'll just make sure to really get like, maybe even get a pump before you leave. If you're doing legs, maybe I'll do some lunges at the end. I'll go push a prowler at the end. I'll hop, uh, we're lucky enough we have a belt squat machine. I'll hit on some reps on that. Just get my lungs breathing a little bit and get some blood into the muscle. Uh, Cause then you leave feeling at least you got work done. Maybe the, the quality of the barbell work, the strength of the barbell work wasn't there. Uh, same with upper body. I'll bang out a super set of like chin ups and bicep curls just cause I know I got enough work done uh, to cause a little bit of hypertrophy and feel a little bit better about that day. After the fact, you know, it's it's just part of the game. You know, there's gonna be almost as many bad days as there are good days. The, the deeper you get into training, the, the more experience you are, the more um, uh, time under tension, the years of iron you have, uh, just almost gets worse. How long it will take to get, uh, regain your strength back after being sick? You probably didn't lose much strength, buddy. You probably just lost liquids, food, uh, sleep, hydration, um, probably a week or two. No strength is actually lost. Benching every day to increase strength. You can bench every day to increase strength. Uh, periodizing, planning, knowing your program, uh, and if you're gonna sacrifice perhaps, perhaps squat and deadlift, not guaranteed. Um, and if your form's locked down, the the better your form is on each lift, the more frequency, more intensity, more volume you can handle on each of them. That's it for this one, guys. Like that bitch, share that bitch, subscribe to that bitch. I'm out of here. Let's go! Oh!